But I guess I'll end up overcomplicating it again, and maybe I'll be here for 30 hours this time. 30 hours this time. 30 hours this time. What the f***? Hey there, Limit here. Before you ask, no, I didn't forget my password, and no, I didn't give up on this project. Quite the opposite, really. I'm just stupid. I feel really bad about not giving an update lately, so I'm planning on some things for the new year to keep the updates coming more regularly. But hey, at least I'm here with the sixth and what was supposed to be the final part of this prototype. In case you're new here, this is J.A. Eisen, my open sourced AI VTuber project where anyone can make their own AI VTuber similar to Neurosama. In previous videos, we made the AI VTuber, but what's left is to prepare it for streaming, which involves being able to control it on the fly. That's where this video comes in. We've got to make a website which connects to this project and does a bunch of cool stuff for us. As for the other stuff needed for streaming, that will come later this week because this is already getting ridiculously out of scope. Speaking of scope, I'm also changing how these videos are going to work. You may have noticed that this video is a lot shorter than the other ones, even though this is probably the most time that I've spent coding so far. After the last few videos, I've decided I want to move all the technical stuff into their own videos, so I have more time to explain what I'm doing, and with less distractions. So that way it's more useful for you, and also less to edit for me. So if you also want to see what went into making this, a separate video will be linked in the description, going way more in depth than I ever would have in previous videos. With that out of the way, let's answer the question at hand. What took so long? Anyone who's tried to build a website can tell you just how tedious and frustrating it is. That's where today's... You're telling me 17 subscribers isn't enough for a sponsorship? I actually started out as a programmer, making websites and web apps. I did everything from your classic Mern tutorials, to working several internships as a web developer, both on the actual client applications users use, and also the servers behind the scenes. This whole concept of web development is nothing new to me, but I can confidently say that making a website is some of the most miserable shit that I can put myself through. Like sure, it's probably more fun for creatives, but as someone who both sucks at art and sucks at UI design, the best thing to come out of my day is successfully centering some text. But that's not the reason this took 50 hours to make. Because with website building frameworks like React, it would probably only take a few hours to whip up a similar website with all the tools and libraries that React already has. And any logical person would have used a framework. But I'm not a logical person. In my infinite wisdom, I so badly wanted to keep everything in a Python runtime and as minimal as possible that I chose... I chose Flask. Now going from React to Flask is like going from Photoshop to Paint. I can draw, and I can erase things, and and I can draw. And so because of my well thought out decisions in life, I have spent the majority of this video programming in raw HTML. I pray for the day I actually start using my head to make these decisions. I added some new developer features like improved system logging before I actually moved on to learning how to do anything in Flask. And because of how simple this framework is, if you can even call it a framework, I simply learned everything by going through each feature in the quick start guide. This was all well and good, but my application would need more complicated behavior that I could not achieve with just these features. So I wanted to try making my first Flask application, which would be a tool to view my log files in real time while they were still being updated by the project itself. Looking back at it now, this really isn't something that's beginner friendly, but fuck it we ball. Maybe here we go again. More web sockets. That's so annoying, I still have to code in JavaScript. We're gonna take this in baby steps because I, I, I actually don't know how to fucking proceed with this. Okay, let's just modify this a little bit. So we're gonna get rid of most of these. We're gonna get rid of all of these. So when I click the submit button, we're gonna send out my event. And this data will have whatever is in here inside of this form. That's perfect. We can work with this now in order to display our logs. Gotta love front-end development. So do test, this works, if I do test, there's no such file. 
perfect so we can pass in um, the folder the file and the interval in which it refreshes these logs every time we get a new update to this we see it immediately changes over here and we can change this interval to 2000 milliseconds so every two seconds get rid of that save that save that save yeah you see it takes time to update I eventually got it with the help of the internet, and now I'm confident we can do everything we need for the final application. Now all I need to do is to go from this to my final application. I've determined that I am so slow at this because I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want to put into the web UI. I don't know what I want to do for the application. I guess if this proves anything, we still have monkey brains. Look, it's hard to think of how everything goes together at once if you don't even know what everything is. What I needed was a starting point, the broad strokes. Thankfully for us developers, we use online tools like Figma to draw out designs. It's not the finest design, but I'm also someone with no artistic ability. But with this, making the design for the other pages would be much simpler, and I could actually focus on deciding what features I would actually need. I started off by making this kind of reference page just to get an idea of the color palette that I'm working with. I ended up generating one off of a website and this was the one that I got, I kind of like. And so we're using Roboto text, that's pretty standard, using the colors as our accents and the black and whites as our main tones. Now onto actually making this. A lot of the problems I face as a front-end developer isn't so much of the logic of how things work, but rather getting everything where they need to be. Not just information, but even just positioning every last piece. It's a classic, how do I center a div problem. So it was pretty straightforward to build out the shell of the web app with just simple trial and error. But right now, nothing actually does anything, it's just a facade. All that's left to do is to add functionality to this UI. But there's a big problem, tech debt. When I started out this project, this was just a prototype that would get scrapped. But after having invested so much time into it, I can't just purge it now. But because of my mentality in the beginning, this project is just a jumbled mess of spaghetti code, only rivaled by League of Legends. So I had some big plans for this project. I'll spend most of the technical video talking about what I did, but just know that basically everything I've done in these past five videos got reworked in some way. And oh my god, let me just say that it is so much better to work with than before. And going back with my newfound knowledge let me improve so many other systems, especially the Discord bot and the text-to-text -text AI models. Now because of those changes, it's easy to integrate this new Flask app and any future application to this project. I think one-time requests could be pretty easy. There we go. We got a response. Uh, we can see it better if we come to here. Response, status, false, status, true. There we go. So we've successfully sent our one-time request over to JAISEN and it is stored inside of our context now. That's the general gist of what we're gonna be doing. We're just adding a new function to JAISEN, um, adding a new endpoint to our API, connecting the two, and then making functionality for it inside of our front end. That's what I'm gonna be doing for the next God knows how long. Pretty much everything else is the same cycle. But with so many features, this took several days on top of my already busy work schedule. These last few components are the complicated ones that made me build a real-time log monitoring project in the first place. Again, I talked about this in the technical video, but once I figured out how this technology works, it was pretty hassle-free. So, here's the final web UI and all its features. Okay, take two. That first try at the demo was an absolute disaster. There are like 20 breaking bugs that I need to go and fix. Those are going to come out in the next patch for the next video when I go on my bug bashing spree and do all that other shit. Because I know there are a lot of bugs with this right now, with me trying to rush to get this out. I fixed up some of the bugs just now. We're going to get this done. Let's begin. Here's the web page, actually, for real this time. We don't have a graphic. The web UI is kind of plain. We're going to need a better website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to start off by checking out the assets page. Now, this assets page is like 
the bread and butter of everything. We have audio outputs over here, so we can output to the virtual audio cable as well as to our headphones. So we no longer need to make use of voice meter in order to perform our multiplexing like we did before. Actually, I'll first show it in the web UI and then I'll show it in BTube Studio. Let's go to Discord. Let's have him join the channel. Let's ask it to give us a response. Can you give me a medium length response? Hey, 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 on the medium response, gotcha. You know what they say, it's not the size of the response, it's how you use it, or something like that. But like, actually we keep it medium here, can't let the big boys overshadow my uh, average achievement. Huh? So there it was working inside the web UI, but how do we get this into VTube Studio? You can either have an element on OBS and kind of green screen this out. And originally the original design was green and to green screen it out. But I noticed that you have to have the window open on a visible desktop the entire time. You can't just put it on a virtual desktop like with Windows Task View or something and you can't minimize it or put another window over it. Otherwise, it will stop rendering the text whenever it updates. So what we can do instead is make use of a VTube Studio web item. If I come over here, come next to here where you would set your background and instead spawn a new web item, we can create a new web item, take the URL to that page, and throw it in here. Now this will load up our page and the background is transparent by default. I made that change earlier. This ID right here, this is basically a transparent background. I can now scroll this up. I'm not gonna rotate it because I fucking hate it when it's rotated. We're just gonna scale this up and we're gonna lock it. And we're gonna come to settings, see how big it is. Okay, sure. We're going to increase the Y a little bit. Sure, that's good enough. We're gonna crop off the top until we no longer see those top elements. And that's good. Now we can ask it to give us another response. I'm also going to give it back its voice cable. And because we're not using voice meter, we don't need to do any restarting or any bullshit like that. So now, let me just turn on the virtual capture device. I can go back to Discord, unmute, and ask for another response. Can you give me another similar response? Hey, hey, hey. Back on the medium response grind, I see. Can't let the little ones down, huh? I got you, don't worry. Just gotta keep it average over here. Can't let anyone know I'm packing big comments in my code. Sure. <laughs> so subtitlers working. Audio is coming from my browser. You can see that it's actually muted. So that's it for the assets page. That's pretty cool. Let's come over to configs now and showcase this. You'll also notice that we also got a notification on the side. That's just to help us give feedback for when we press buttons and stuff. And so here we have, this is actually the configuration that we have inside of this config file. And so I'm going to make a copy of this and we're going to call this test. We're going to rename, I don't know, Nova to Novi, right? For our text-to-speech generation voice. First, let's reload the page. And we now have test JSON here. I'm going to load this and we got that. Now, if I come over to text generation, we'll see we have the voice Navi versus if I were using limit default, it would be Nova. Now we can make this change to be Navi, Navi, Nav, I don't fucking know. And we'll save this to test.json. There was a problem with that, but you see that there was actually an update inside of our test.json file. And I can even save this to a different file like test2.json. It'll still say it failed, but actually it was fine. So that's all good. We can come over to controls. The prompter allows us to edit and load in different prompt files. So we can make use of an example prompt and load it. I don't know what's with this, but we have, that's exactly what we have over here. When I ask the AI to do something, it will be make use of this prompt. So if I say your name is, and then this is the variable name, which we have configured inside of configs. This will be J. Eisen. I'm going to change this to say, and you are my butler. You must always address me by my lord. We're going to do that and we're going to save this to test.txt. Save as, save the prompt file. We now have this inside of test.txt. J. Eisen will now make use of this prompt or I can switch it back to its default. So let's use the test one that we made. You've been slacking off on your duties lately. Uh, whoops. I accidentally closed the assets page, but that would have produced a result. But as you can see, it responded to me as my lord, and it is my butler. Now, if I change it back to limit default, 
please respond. Why are you talking like that? My lord, I am but a simple AI butler, and it is unbefitting of me to handle the large responses. Please forgive me. What? What? Does it actually still think it's my butler? No, okay, it is just the A it's an AI thing. It is not a system thing. Because if I come over to my program and I look at the latest response, you can see that your name is Jay Eisen, you are an AI VTuber, blah blah blah. It is not the butler prompt. It is just being weird like that. So the prompter works for changing out the prompt on the fly. So you can tell it to give an outro, to give an intro, to play certain characters, blah, blah, blah. You can also update the context here so you can include or exclude parts of the context. But currently this doesn't really do anything because we only really have the one context. We can also do one time request. Stop performing the Butler act. I'm gonna send this. Now our one time request has been queued. Whoops, looks like we got another fucking bug. <laughs> there are 10 million fucking bugs with this thing, man. Holy crap. Okay, when I sent my one time request, it ended up turning into a test message. <laughs> I think I forgot to implement that. But if I check out the previous ones, there is no request, which means we did get a request. I just didn't parse it correctly. <laughs> one time requester theoretically would work. Name replacer. This name replacer basically just replaces names. Instead of limit, we're gonna call me to my limit. I'm gonna save that. What the fuck? Why are there so many problems? I literally tested these. Oh my god, man. I don't know how there's this many problems. Can you say my name? I said, can you say my name? Holy Fuck, it's so broken, man. I fucking can't. Okay, we're gonna try this again. The last thing I want to show is the response previewer and the ability to cancel responses. I am gonna have it cancel the response so it stops playing midway through. Okay, let's pull it up. Jay Eisen, join my channel, you fucking buggy bastard. Oh my god, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. You're gonna call me by to my limit now. And your name is Jay Eisen. And we're gonna stop your response in the middle of it. I need you to tell me a story. Oh, why are you like this? Once upon a time in the land of Coderia. Okay. Okay, it worked. Yes, yes, we got a very long response but we were able to stop it right at the beginning let's ask it to see if it has my new name what is my name it just didn't respond i hate this thing but you see to my limit is inside the script so oh, fuck it i don't fucking there's so many there's so many things wrong with this thing <laughs> So yeah, this was my super simple overview of the last 50 hours of this project. There weren't so many big problems as there were in previous videos, but just a lot of little problems and tinkering that's natural for web development. Most of the time was spent actually going through over 3000 lines of code, but I think there was a lot of interesting technical design points to it. A lot has changed from the previous videos, and like I said, a deep dive into it will be in the description. And remember that this actually isn't the end for this prototype. I'm going to be going on a bug bashing spree and implement some final features I'll need before the new year. Then we'll have a video for that to conclude this prototype, and I'll give you my plans for the future. Anyways, as always, link to the code will be in the description. Like and subscribe to get the word out there. Leave a comment with things that I can improve on. I'll get up and out of your way now. Thanks for watching.